Yes, welcome back once again uh, in our week formulation. In the last class, we have discussed uh, uh, Neumann problem Neumann with the Neumann condition with the first order term and we it was uh, easy to get the existence uniqueness and regularity it was phi. Now, we go to there is a slight difference when you go to without a first order term. So, we will be working with minus Laplace n u equal to f in omega with d u by d nu equal to 0 on d omega. So, let us uh, uh, issue. So, in general, so observations or facts, observations or facts. So, let me call it this to be 1 again. If u is a solution, solution then u plus c is also a solution for all constants for all c in r. So, that means there is no uniqueness even if there is a uniqueness is the first thing. Okay. So, the first question you address does this give all the solutions if there is a does there exist any other solution does there exist any other solution. Luckily no. So, if you can find one solution no. So, if you can find one solution then all solutions are given by u plus c. How does that prove? So, to see this for if u 1 and u 2 are solutions of 1 then u equal to u 1 minus u 2 satisfies Laplace n of uh, Laplace n of u equal to 0 can put a minus and d u by d nu equal to 0 okay. that you get immediately. Now, multiply by u integrate by parts use the boundary condition this is in omega this is on d omega ok. Integrate by parts multiply by u u probably you can take u from h 1 of omega ok. Multiply uh, parts gives you integral of grade u square equal to 0 the boundary term do not come that implies u equal to constant that is any two solutions differ by a constant any two solutions if x is if x is differ by a constant. by a constant that is a one fact to observe ok. That is a one important thing first. So, you, you cannot look for solutions in h 1 of omega as therefore, a suitable space would be we will come back more to it suitable space would be the caution space would be we have discussed this h 1 of omega to r ok. Because uh, you have already seen earlier we have discussed this about the m plus 1 p omega cos it out by p m of omega and you have seen that Poincare type inequality means 
the highest derivative it can be estimated below from the uh, uh, highest derivative norm. Uh, the semi norm type can be estimated from this. So, there is a Poincare type between. So, this is uh, exactly when m equal to 1 0 this is nothing but uh, n p equal to 2 this is nothing but your h 1 of omega or r. Okay. So, we will come back to this one. So, uh, before coming back to this, uh, this immediately tells you the suitable space would be that one. So, you have to look for so not one solution, you have to look for u and its uh, constants that is what I say. The second point I want to think about the ex this is about the uniqueness regarding existence. Look at the equation, look at this equation and integrate. We get if you integrate you get integral over f over omega. So, uh, f is I uh, start with f in L 2 of omega otherwise you have to do duality. So, that will be your minus Laplacian u over omega integrate by parts and you get integral over du by d nu over d omega. Okay. Uh, maybe go to put a minus sign there. Okay. And then d u by d nu equal to 0. So, this will be 0. Okay. All right. So, you see uh, maybe plus I think just check it. So, that implies integral of f equal to 0 over omega is a necessary condition. Necessary condition. In other words, in other words, in other words, if this not necessary condition, this is always important. If necessary conditions are not satisfied, if integral of f not equal to zero over omega, no solution. So you have to put, so you have to study the equation. So we have to study need to study study this equation with a study one with the, the this is called compatibility condition because it is a necessary condition you have to impose it compatibility condition integral of f equal to 0. You see you that means uh, basically you have to of course, you may put conditions on u to fix this constant that is a different thing. So, these two points immediately motivates you to look for solutions. So, look for solutions in h 1 of omega I will little bit again elaborate though we are discussed in the general case of w m plus 1 p of omega, but we will do with the fact integral of f equal to 0 that is what. Now, can we prove existence and uniqueness in this space? This space uniqueness is equivalent to saying uh, the solutions are defined up to an additive constant. So, how do you define this space on this space? This is done again I am repeating once more. You define an equivalence relation that u equivalent to v if u minus v is a constant see constant. So, that gives you elements of uh, equivalence classes this is an element x. So, any two elements in the class is differ by a constant and you also define a norm on this. So, the idea is that you look for the smallest nearly the smallest infimum uh, the smallest possible. So, choose the constant so that uh, u plus c in h 1 of omega for all c in r. This is how you are done 
w m plus 1 you have added the polynomials of degree less than or equal to m because uh, I, here it is 0. So, you are proving this one and this is the norm and you know that this norm satisfies Poincare type inequality satisfies Poincare type inequality that is what we have done that is what the general result it is a uh, and the special thing in this case is nothing but your Poincare Wettinger inequality that is all you are using it Poincare inequality in this space. So, that is what this is the norm in this space and you are defined that. So, you have this norm defined that. So, now you can form a weak formulation on x. How do you define a weak formulation? You define on x a from x cross x to r you define a u v a you pick any element it does not matter it is well defined a u v is equal to integral of grade u grade v because whatever be the element you pick from uh, the equivalence class u the grade of that equivalence class is uh, uh, the same because uh, uh, so this is nothing but uh, what I am saying is that grade of u grade of v this is what I am defining and this is by definition and by definition this is well defined because whichever point you to choose from the equivalence class it does not matter because it is only differ you are adding a constant and the grade of the constant is equal to 0. So, and you also define a linear form this is the bilinear form you define a linear form a integral of f v is equal to integral of f v you choose any element does not matter because well defined here is the fact you are using if I choose v equal to v plus c integral of v is equal to integral of v plus c, but uh, c is a constant and integral of f is equal to 0. So, it is also well defined integral of f. So, you are using this compatibility condition. Okay. So, you are bilinear. So, the uh, 1 the uh, form is 2. Now, your form is a u v a u v is equal to integral of f v. Okay. This is for all v in x and now apply lax graph. I am going to give another proof for you using because that is another way of looking at it. lax graph imply there exists unique u okay, in x that is the way you can prove that. Okay. Yeah, so you have your existence uniqueness in that way, but there is let me uh, tell you another way existence uniqueness solution existence uniqueness uniqueness via Fredholm alternative via Fredholm alternative it is nice to learn these things. Okay. So, let me call these are the equation minus Laplace n of u equal to f in omega u equal to 0 d u by d nu equal to 0 on d omega and integral of f equal to 0 okay, over omega. So, you get uh, as I as you seen earlier you get not just one unique solution you get solutions and all its additive constants you can fix the uh, constant by demanding a condition like integral of u equal to so something like that you can do that. And the technique of further alternate you are already seen. So, what I am going to do is a similar thing. So, how you how powerful this further alternative to the thing. Consider 
this is for lambda positive you consider minus Laplace n of u plus the moment you add a zeroth order term then it is not a problem f in omega and there exists a unique solution you already seen it ok and you do not need a condition right now ok. So, there exists a unique solution. So, there exists unique u in h 1 of omega ok. So, that is not a problem. So, you have a solution map exactly we have done it in the previous situation you have a map g. So, you have a map a starting with l 2 your f is in l 2 of omega you are starting with a map from l 2 to h 1 omega bounder case you are getting omega you are assuming smooth all that. So, you have a solution f going to u that is a solution. So, g f equal to u equal to g f and this is compactly contained in l 2 of omega and that is identity map going to u g f ok identity map and this map is compact ok compact and what is the meaning that is uh, minus Laplace n of g f plus lambda g f is equal to f ok. So, you have that one again as we have seen earlier this is equivalent to u equal to exactly what we have j g of f plus lambda u ok and uh, you put again v equal to f plus lambda u and this will become equivalent to uh, let me write 1 over lambda v minus f is equal to g v ok. So, that is what we are getting or uh, v minus lambda g v is equal to f. So, you have that exactly that identity right this is identity minus lambda g of v. So, again if lambda inverse if 1 over lambda is not an Eigen value absolutely no difference the difference is just coming now <laughs> is not an Eigen value then unique solution exists right. But do you know that there is no uniqueness. So, what does that imply no uh, then unique solution exists ok. So, uh, for every lambda positive it is not an Eigen value you have a unique solution. So, uh, since we have already seen that uniqueness is not there uh, every lambda inverse is a Eigen value. So, the claim ok for lambda greater than 0 this is trivial lambda minus 1 is an Eigen value of g. immediately you can see that it is not an exercise, but I would like you to realize yourself immediately. Any constant you take a, you take a, any any constant is an Eigen vector any constant uh, you can choose the constant here ok. Uh, constant at a not any constant you take f equal to g constants are Eigen vectors ok that means uh, there exists f not equal to 0. In fact, what I am saying that is a constant you can see that I can write down, but I would in would like you to see such that g f equal to lambda inverse f that is not difficult right lambda inverse is a constant and then you can see that g f is the solution. So, if you take f is a constant you know all that. So, constant is the one you will be playing it. So, every lambda inverse is an Eigen value. So, what do you have to do? The thing is that so, uh, and what we have seen basically the dimension of uh, uh, 
कर्णल ऑफ आई माइनस लामडा जी इज एक्चुअली वन दैट आल्सो यू कैन रे इफ यू वांट टू प्रूव ए प्रूफ ऑफ दिस सो दिस इज अ क्लेम दैट दिस इज वन डायमेंशनल स्पेस ओके एंड हाउ डू यू सी दैट वन if v is in the kernel i minus lambda g that immediately tells you gv is equal to lambda inverse of v okay but what does that mean lambda inverse of v this actually implies that uh, laplace minus laplace n of v equal to zero in omega you can check that if you are not convinced dv by d nu equal to 0 okay on d omega because gv is this one but what is gv gv is a solution to this one okay so that means uh, you will get immediately these two conditions okay plus conditions are there so that this will imply v is a constant that's we have already see so only that so that means kernel of i minus lambda g you can identify with the reals because it's all constants okay so you got the so by now fredo alternative what is fredo alternative will tell you fredo implies uh, Uh, yeah. one has a solution so what is one this is one uh, one is not written here yeah so i can call this one one has a solution if and only if f is in the kernel of uh, i minus lambda g here g is a sim uh, symmetric operator so you don't have to take g star that's equivalent to saying because kernel of i minus g is a constant that is if and only if uh, f1 or f1 any constant f1 equal to 0 that's equivalent to integral of f equal to 0 you see so you have that so even with the fredholm alternative you get that condition and you can prove so you can solve the more generally so that is about uh, in in homogeneous homogeneous boundary condition you can consider more generally consider non homogeneous condition homogeneous problem like minus laplace n of u equal to f in omega and du by d nu equal to g on d omega and what is the boundary condition you need to take here so exactly you do this uh, trace theorem and what is the compatibility condition compatibility condition compatibility condition is integral of f is equal to uh, minus integral of laplace n of u over omega and that by integration by parts you get minus du by d nu over g over boundary of omega that's nothing but minus integral of g over boundary so that implies the compatibility condition is integral over d omega g equal to 0 so you see you can integrate this condition now when you have two non homogeneous terms you split that solution into two parts and that's the same thing you do it now let's uh, uh, understand that if you are looking for a solution u in h1 of omega and you are u restricted to the boundary these are all you have seen it is in h half and of d omega but then du by d nu is grade du by d nu restricted to the boundary 
is nothing but grade u that reduces one more thing and this has to be interpreted as an h minus half element you see. So, how do you give an h minus half element and how do you define that? So, you have d u by d nu if you want to interpret as h minus half it should act on because h minus half is the dual of h half. So, you have your duality bracket and then h half of d omega this is in d omega as your extensions possible. So, you define this something like uh, integral of grade u grade v plus uh, integral of from the equation f v over omega. So, you can do that way. So, with that interpretations uh, what you have to do is that. So, if g is in uh, if you have g uh, in h half. So, you choose u bar. So, this is the way you do it. So, these are all some uh, exercises you have to work it out into uh, looking into various details. Uh, so, you have to choose u bar in uh, h 1 of course, if g is in h half it is better you start with a g in h half it would be better. So, you can choose this h 1 of omega uh, u d u bar by d nu equal to g first and then look for a solution then these are same steps you to follow look for a solution every time you look for it is meaningful u is of the form u bar plus v and that will imply you are now minus Laplace n of v is equal to f plus Laplace n of u bar. Now, you see and this is on the right side and you may have to treat it as a L 2 or h minus 1 function that is the way you have to do that one ok. And then uh, of course, in that case your problem is d v by d nu equal to 0 on d you can get the our estimates here and then this will have a solution the same condition will have a solution if and only if this one f plus Laplace n of u bar 1 equal to 0 that is a compatibility condition that is equivalent to saying that uh, integral of f with a smooth assumption d omega a, a omega integral of integral of f over omega plus integral over g d omega is equal to 0. So, you can uh, deal with your non homogeneous situations clearly. So, now let me make remarks I thought I will cover little more, but then uh, let me make a couple of remarks I think. One uh, see the Dirichlet condition Dirichlet condition is specified on the space specify is specified on this space this is an imposed boundary condition space h 1 naught. So, your boundary conditions are given in the space. So, you need not have to recover it. So, this is called the essential boundary condition essential boundary condition. On the other hand Neumann the condition the boundary condition is not there in the space boundary condition is not in not imposed on h 1 of omega you see. So, that actually gives us a naturally. So, the boundary condition obtained naturally. 
so it's called natural it's called natural boundary condition okay so this is the terminology you would be reading uh, or le while learning these topics so let me uh, make these things very clear you can also use other type of boundary condition other types of boundary condition types of boundary condition so these are all exercises you should do work it out ok so all what i am not covering it is not very difficult if it is difficult i may not be giving to you but uh, these are all uh, it is to, uh, to make your subject very strong whatever you learned it you should work out for this thing for example you can impose plus some alpha u equal to 0 alpha positive rather thing these are called uh, robin boundary condition robin boundary condition ok you can also have oblique type boundary condition d u by d nu plus alpha 2 d u by d tau that means this is tangential tangential boundary condition oblique boundary conditions there are other you can impose whatever you like oblique boundary condition ok so work it out uh, uh, derive weak formulations derive weak formulation ok and what else to do here some more things I should be yeah the uh, one more thing you can work while using L naught minus d i of a i j of d j this operator. So, the boundary condition the natural boundary condition the is that means Neumann natural Neumann boundary this is what the boundary term you have to see what is the boundary term coming there boundary condition is uh, is called the co-normal derivative. So, this is uh, you call it A we call d nu a is equal to a i j of x d u by d x j nu i this is called the co-normal derivative. derivative ok good. So, now I will stop here and then uh, we will continue uh, with uh, another lecture maybe we will uh, do little bit on pile up and problems. Thank you.